Welcome to AO North America Hand Education Committee's Case of the Month. In this edition, we will be dealing with volar marginal fractures of the distal radius, paying attention particularly to anatomical features and radiographic features which are critical in understanding fractures of this area and which have a bearing on surgical fixation. The volar lunate facet, shown in this slide, marked by the X and with the two circles, represents the intermediate column of the distal radius and bears the attachment of the short radial lunate ligament. In addition, as seen in the picture on the right, the radioscapho capitate ligament attaches to the radial styloid on an average about 7 millimeters ulnar to the tip of the radial styloid. The volar lunate facet extends volarly, distally, as well as ulnarly when thinking about the distal radius volar rim. As mentioned before, it bears the attachment of the short radial lunate ligament. If one were to use conventional, contemporarily available volar lock plating, which is positioned at the watershed line, then indeed this volar lunate facet can escape that fixation, leading to volar carpal subluxation. A shear is what is represented by a volar marginal fracture. In the absence of advanced imaging, a true lateral radiograph can help assess the shear injury with the help of the teardrop angle. In other words, the teardrop angle may be used as a surrogate for displacement of the intermediate column or the volar lunate facet. When analyzing radiographs of distal radius fractures with volar marginal fractures, plain x-rays can be notoriously inadequate. Therefore, it is critical to image this area using another modality such as a CT. So the question is, when do I use a CT? I use a CT to assess fracture displacement, articular depression, impaction, and analyze comminution and occult fracture lines, as well as generation of a 3D reconstruction, which is invaluable to plan surgical tactics and placement of hardware. These volar marginal fractures tend to be far more complex than is evident on plain radiographs. Daly and colleagues studied 40 CT scans of volar marginal fractures. These authors found that in 80% of patients, there were three or more discrete fracture fragments. In addition, they also found that in 60% of patients, there was a longitudinal split in the articular fragment. Furthermore, they went on to document central articular depression in 53% of these patients. Finally, if one were to consider a dorsal cortical break 12 millimeters from the joint line, this was noted in 75% of the patients that they studied in this study of 40 CT scans. This slide shows a classic volar marginal fracture, also eponymously known as the volar Barton fracture. Although it may appear that this is a single large piece on the radiographs, it is evident from the CT scan as seen on the lower left hand side that the volar marginal piece is indeed comminuted. This slide is more representative of what may be seen in a high energy volar marginal fractures with the classic volar shear, central depression, articular comminution, as well as the suggestion of a possible dorsal cortical break. In this slide, we see a rather uncommon variation of the volar marginal fracture. Here you will notice that the rest of the distal radius appears relatively intact, whereas the volar lunate facet is affected by itself. This leads to an increased teardrop angle, and as seen on the CT, the fracture fragment is restricted only to the volar lunate facet. This is the isolated lunate facet fracture. 
So the take home message for this section of case of the month are namely the volar lunate facet extends volarly, ulnarly and distally. Volar marginal fractures tend to be far more complex than may be evident on plain x-ray. A CT scan is invaluable in assessment as well as planning surgical tactics. For additional reading, you will notice on the next slide some references. Next month, we will deal with surgical tactics in addressing volar marginal fractures of the distal radius.